Hello dear students, welcome. Today we have different topics to discuss. Uh, we have one very interesting topic of literature. Uh, especially in literature, there are different forms of language, there are different forms of uh, learning material. Uh, so we have one topic uh, that is figure of speech. Uh, you know, figure of speech, uh, that is, uh, that is used figurative language, especially the language that is decorated, that is beautifully presented uh, through the words, through using various types of uh, methods and ways, uh, using figures of speech. So here, figures of speech make language beautiful and decorated to literature and poetry, especially uh, poetry, we see different types of words, uh, different types of uh, words are presented very beautifully. Uh, so these words uh, such as uh, metaphor, uh, you know, comparison, and that is simile, oxymoron, uh, that is onomatopoeia, you know, such words come under figure of speech. Uh, especially in figure of speech, figurative language has been used. That, is, that means figurative language has the use of figure of speech. Uh, so being based on it, uh, we will have lots of discussion about figures of speech. Uh, now let's start the figure of speech. Uh, this figure of speech make language beautiful and uh, that is uh, ornamented, uh, that is uh, literature and poetry. Figurative language has the use of figures of speech. So here the first figure of speech, hyperbole. Especially in hyperbole, a uh, figure of speech that uses exaggeration of, to express strong emotion or create a comic effect. Here is exaggerating the matter. Exaggerating means speaking loudly in a louder way. Uh, that is the that is uh, the exaggeration of the things in hyperbole. It captures this uh, figure of speech. Uh, the uh, Limousin was as long as the Titanic and Julie wears so much makeup she has to use a sand blaster to get it up at night. So that is a good example of hyperbole. Uh, so we have next uh, metaphor. Uh, metaphor, it is uh, one strong comparison. It is used uh, as a strong comparison without uh, using like or yes. It expresses the comparison between two objects. Uh, this figure of speech that makes a comparison between uh, two unlike things without using a, a connective word such as like or yes. Metaphors can be direct, uh, that is implied, extended or mixed. Uh, for example, I am soft, sipped uh, in an hourglass, that is Gerard Manley Hopkins' uh, uh, piece of writing. So this shows a metaphor, shows Eastern comparison. Uh, Especially, there is a so much difference. Uh, there is a little difference between a metaphor and simile. A metaphor uses a strong comparison without the use of like or yes, whereas simile uses uh, like or yes is weak comparison. Uh, so then we have next uh, imagery uh, that is also uh, a kind of figure of speech. Uh, imagery is use of words to create a sensory experience or image. Uh, uses uh, the five senses there uh, that helps you imagine the place, you smell the food, get angry, etc. It shows uh, a kind of figurative things here. In the language, it is used figuratively. So, uh, example, the family dinner was a combination of boisterous conversation, badly born chicken, and the scent of freshly baked bread. So, that is a good example of imagery as a figure of speech. Uh, so, then we have one. Uh, figure of speech that is uh, onomatopoeia. Uh, onomatopoeia is the term for a word that sounds like what is describing, especially the sound like what is describing. Uh, so we see in Shakespeare, full fathom five, thy father lies, there is a ding dong, ding dong. So that is one example of onomatopoeia. So example include of this uh, figure of speech, uh, whoosh, splat, buzz, click, wink. Uh, that is a good example of onomatopoeia. Uh, that is uh, figure of speech. So the, the next figure of speech is pun. So pun is a little device that is also known as a play on words. Puns involve words with similar identical sound but with different meanings. Uh, their play on words also relies on a word 
or phrases having more than one meaning uh, puns are generally intended to be humorous but they often have a serious purpose uh, that is as well as in literary works uh, here are some example of puns that may be found in uh, everyday expression daniel is a river in egypt the cyclist was to tie tutu in the race and take my wife please so, you know it has very typical uh, way of presentation here so it denotes more than one meaning pun that is interesting figure of speech so you have the next uh, figure of speech that is sarcasm sarcasm is also use of words usually used to either mock or annoy someone or for humorous purposes sarcasm may employ uh, ambivalence although it is not necessarily ironic most noticeable in spoken words sarcasm is mainly distinguished by the inflection with which it is spoken and is largely content dependent so that is uh, the interesting figure of speech uh, in literature uh, then we have next uh, uh, that is irony uh, irony uh, that that means a uh, deliberate contrast between two levels of meaning so uh, there are three types of irony one is verbal irony and situational and dramatic irony so a uh, verbal implies uh, implying a different meaning than what is directly stated so different than sarcasm which is much more direct and harsh we see so next one situational the opposite of what is expected happens so that is situational one and the next one that is dramatic audience knows something that one or more of the characters uh, does not do that okay so here one example uh, that is a uh, donkey can i stay with you please and shark of course donkey really said no so here uh, another one is a couple uh, appears in court to finalize a uh, divorce let's say but during the proceeding they remarry in state so that is also and next one is juliet is actually not dead but asleep uh, with the help of a strong person romeo sees her lying in the tomb and kills himself uh, because he believes her to be dead so that is also a good example of it so that is a uh, also interesting uh, figure of speech in literature then we have next uh, uh, figure of speech is satire a uh, genre of comedy uh, ridic that is a rid uh, ridiculing human facts such as vanity uh, hypocrisy stupidity and greed the aim is to evoke laughter or expose and criticize uh, that is the matter come under satire here so example anything on saturday night live or the daily show and austin powers ridicules the spy movie and heroes and jonathan swift of modest proposal in which he proposes a solution to the problem of over population in ireland the children of the poor should be a food source for rich that is also a good example of satire so satire one interesting uh, uh, figure of speech uh, we have uh, different types of figure of speech here so one more things uh, here so then we we have next one is uh, that is allusion uh, allusion is also an interesting figure of speech uh, that is used in literature uh, in figurative language a reference to a statement person place event or thing that is known from literature history religion myth politics sports science or arts uh, it deals about this uh, uh, which denotes uh, the language figuratively that supplies very uh, supplies a very different example uh, supplied the meaning in different way uh, example christy did not like to spend money she was uh, no uh, scrog but she seldom purchases anything except the beer necessities uh, so that is uh, the figure of speech of allusion then we have our uh, next figure of speech that is paradox a uh, paradox is a self contradictory statement especially paradox a statement that appears to be contradictory but actually expresses the truth so that is the paradox so uh, that is a less is more it so truth must dazzle gradually or every man be blind uh, emily dickinson that is one good example of paradox that is parad paradoxical statement and uh, next one is success is counted sweetest by those who never succeed emily dickinson so that is also the good example of paradoxical statement so it is in giving that we receive francis assis so uh, this emily dickinson's uh, much madness is divine sense that is also one paradoxical statement that is also come under paradox that is the 
uh, statement that appears to be contradictory. Uh, so uh, that is also one interesting figure of speech. Uh, then we have symbolism, especially symbolism uh, that is also a figure of speech uh, that is used in literature, uh, represents uh, something else and itself actually occurs, uh, uh, always actually occurs in the text, usually more than once instead of years comparison. Uh, common symbols that is rose, flag, rain, and uh, these, that is, these all come under this symbolism. So then we have next uh, figure of speech that is simile. Figure of speech that makes a comparison between two seemingly uh, unlike things by using uh, connective words uh, like uh, years and then years resembles. Uh, for example, my love is like a red, red rose. That is a good example of simile. Uh, so, as we discussed earlier, metaphor and simile, both figure of speech indicate that is a comparison. So, metaphor, that is strong comparison and simile weak comparison. In metaphor, no use of like or yes. In simile, there is a use of like or yes. So, and the sudden of flurries of snowboards like brown leaves swelling by James Russell Lowell. So, his skin was yes cold, yes ice. So, here is the use of yes or like. So, that is a smile. That, that is a simile. Uh, so simile uh, is uh, one interesting figure of speech. So simile and metaphor, uh, they have that differences. Then we have next oxymoron. Oxymoron is also figure of speech which seems to be self-contradictory, but it but is actually true a compressed paradox. For example, Romeo described love using several oxymorons such as cold, fire, feather of lead and sick health. Uh, so that is oxymoron which seems self-contradictory and it is actually true a complex paradox that is paradoxical idea that comes in oxymoron so next example she had a terrible beauty there was a defining silence that is also a good example of this oxymoron so one interesting figure of speech uh, then then we have next one is allegory allegory means that is a constant set of symbols operating on two levels in a story so that is allegory. The example, Plato's allegory of a cave. People are chained in a cave and think that the shadow they see are truth. When people break free, they leave the cave and see things as they truly are. Then we see allegory in George Orwell's Animal Farm. That is a historical allegory of the Cold War, a Bolshevik revolution in Soviet Union. The book is actually about animals' rebellion against the farmers, but then the pig leader abuses his power and manipulates the rest of the animals just like how Joseph Stalin ruled and so uh, ruled the Soviet Union in real life. So that is interesting figure of space. So uh, dear students, uh, we uh, we come into the uh, last point that is allegory. So in today's class we discuss about figure of space. So figure of space one interesting matter to be discussed in literature. Uh, in literature, different distinct of language has been used in literature. So we discuss about this matter. Uh, so especially in literature, uh, between the connotative and generative meaning, uh, generative meaning that is close to the dictionary, whereas uh, uh, that is connotative meaning, uh, it is generally literature uses there. Uh, so uh, in literature, there are different types of meaning. Uh, especially figurative, the, the meaning can be presented figuratively. Uh, that is uh, uh, that is different from the literal meaning. Uh, so, uh, students, we discuss about figure of speech in today's class. Uh, I hope you got the concept. If you have any confusion, uh, you can ask me there. Uh, so, finally, uh, subscribe my channel, Versatile Learning Network. Uh, hope to meet you in our next class. Uh, goodbye.